live from the 607. It is the one and only Ocho Duro Parlay Hour with your host, Ken M, Soundman Galora, JR, and the Padawan J, bringing you all the sports information you need to know. Fingers slipping down your sides, need it close just to feel alive, and that ain't no urge, no man could want to fight. I'm only fighting to get it right, get it right. And welcome to another edition of the ODPH here on the ODPH Network, I guess. Yeah, it works. Hey, I'm your host, Ken. I'm to my left, as always. You know I'm right here. Because where else would you rather be? Sound Mangalore JR, to the right, the intern extraordinaire, Padawan J. Oh, baby. Why waste time, folks? Let's get into some sports talk here. Big story of the week. Big UFC card this weekend. Well, we had our picks online. If you check us out on Twitter, at OD Parlay Hour. And some of us fared better than others. <clears throat> Way to go, Pad. Cha-ching. Oh, baby. It's almost like I know wait, what I'm I think, doing. Hang on. There was two of us on the panel that had four out of five. Who, wait, was that one? I think you had one, right? Who mm-hmm. was the other? Oh, wow. Uh, oh, that's right. I was. You know, sometimes a clock is right two times a day if mm. it's broken. So is uh, my illustrious team here. Is a decent <laughs> night of card, decent night of fights, decent night. Yeah. But let's get into it from top to bottom. The undercard, Jimmy Manwa versus, I'm going to butcher this man's Just name. Volcan. Volcan. And Volcan, Volcan knocked him out first round. 42 seconds. No joke, making a statement in the 205 division. Got to make some noise if you're going to you know, want to get up those ranks. Uh, there is uh, some room to kind of move around now. Uh, yeah. I would say. And uh, definitely made a statement in the primetime hour. I love I love the look at the watch too. Yeah, he's just looking right after the fight. Like, oh, so is it my time? Is it is it my time for a tire fight? Okay, thanks. Yeah, just call just call me next time you need it. And no. wasted no time. Yeah, no, you, you <laughs> really, forty two seconds. And he's like, so seconds, you call me, I'll be there. Forty two seconds, make a statement, and it's you in that division. You have to make a statement because as many guys that are making noise and just talking, saying I want the champ, I want the champ. You gotta make a statement. Yeah. Oh, you, oh, you need somebody to headline two seventeen. I'm there. Yeah. Jones, I don't care, whoever. Shot is shot. You can't fault him on that. I mean, as the Conor McGregor playbook is saying, you need to talk a lot if you want to get those big-name fights. This mm-hmm. is very true. Uh, and you can't really fault him on doing that. Made a statement, so we'll see what happens after this. I don't think he's going to get the title shot next. No. But if he wins his next one, I will say he will get the title shot. I feel really unprepared. I forgot even where he was ranked in that 205. Isn't he in the top five? He he's is close, number five. Right? He's yeah. five. number five. Okay. Yeah. I was, gonna say, I was pretty sure that's where he was. Yeah. So, and definitely there'll be some movement after the next rankings come out, whenever they do. Shuffling. Yep. Next fight on the card was Fight of the Night, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, I don't know about everybody else. Woodley fight? No. Oh, right. No, no, nope. no, no. Too soon. Robbie Lawler, Donald Cerrone. Uh, Lawler came out the gate swinging. I feel like we were robbed in that fight. We, there was two more rounds missing somewhere. There was. I mean, it's one of those when it goes to the judges, too, it's kind of like disappointing, I guess. But yeah. it was so good. We're like, just make him go again. Yeah. And just, I, just give him a fourth round, and then if it's still that good, just make him go a fifth round. Uh, judges just we can't want. decide, so they go, off oh, two more rounds. <laughs> I honestly, you know what? We're going to make it a five-round fight. Not for a title, but we're just, we just like what we're saying. I honestly think it's going to headline the next UFC on Fox. They'll Probably. do a rematch. unless Probably. Unless there's one other match they could make, and I'll get to that a little later. But... If they're not going to make Robbie Lawler into the next title contender, put him back on UFC, on Fox, give him five rounds, let him go. Because Lawler came out the gate swinging because Cerrone is a notorious slow starter in the first mm-hmm. round. Mm-hmm. This is no you know, no unknown factor. And he really took the fight to him. Cerrone kind of opened up in the second round. Statistically, Cerrone won the second round. I know the judges did not give it to him, oh, if I'm like, not mistaken. Yeah, it was like 42 to 7 or something like that. It was an unreal. Yeah, yeah, it was a really weird strike count. As far as strikes, yeah. Yeah, and the third round was kind of very back and forth. Yeah. And when you put it in the judges' hands, you never know what you're going to get. And, no. you know, quite frankly, I know on my scorecard I had Cerrone. I don't know about the rest of my panel here, but... No, I mean, I had, I had Cerrone, and I think everyone in the room... You know, I'm speaking for a few people. I think everybody in the room was a little shocked when they said Lawler over Cerrone because we were kind of like, it wasn't like the most shocking turn we've ever seen when it goes no, to the judge's no. decision. But we were still kind of like, wait, what? Yeah, and I think that it definitely lived up to its hype. I mean, but we, when a fight is that good, you kind of want it to go a little longer if there's not mm-hmm. a def- definitive winner. Oh, yeah. yeah. That, would, that, that I think would be really cool if the judges could so, you know what, just, just run it back one more time. 
Yeah, I mean, they had the time. Just, because just run it back one The more first time. fight was yeah. over in 40 seconds, like Pat said. Oh, yeah. I mean, they had some time yeah. to spare if they really wanted to go that route. Yeah. Albeit, they can't adapt on the fly, but... I mean, when you looked at when you looked at the card, you know, at the start, you thought, okay, cyborg fight, that's a 30-second fight. Mm-hmm. You know, after the first after the first fight we saw, it took forty two seconds. We're like, oh my god, this this card could be over in an hour. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just because you knew going forward, you're like, okay, cyborg, it could be a thirty second fight. Jones DC could be a thirty second fight because they're gonna just come out swinging. At least initially, you could have thought that. But on paper, it it was probably the most stacked card they've had in a while, and you knew that there was gonna be some fighters on that card that mm-hmm. were going to finish. You were not gonna have a very boring fight. Lay yeah. praise and Yeah, you would not be cheated out of your time and your money for if you got the fight. So you wouldn't have two rounds of ballroom dancing. No. No, because that's happening. We in did the get past. one though. We'll mm. get we'll get to that in just just a little bit because there's one fight that was on before it. Women's featherweight title. Was it a fight? I it was I a think murder. I think this. It was not a fight. It was not exactly a straightforward first round KO as we originally thought because I think if you listen to last week's show and you should if you haven't go download it it's great we all had Cyborg winning in the first round and I don't think that any of us thought it was going to go to the second let alone the third okay all right to be fair though this is like okay getting to the third round that was like the common man last week he taking Padawan into the octagon I was like yeah you know what I at least got to work up a sweat well I think that just saying I think that Cyborg's opponent, Tanya Evinger, yeah. yeah, I think that she did as well of a job as you can coming up a weight class and fighting somebody at Cyborg's level. Wasn't it also short notice, too? Yeah, I believe so, because uh, Megan Anderson, I believe, backed out yep. um, mm-hmm. really close to the card. But as we're saying, coming up, going up a weight class and fighting somebody that is dominating at their weight class. Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't think there's any no. you know, misstatement about that. No. I think Tanya did as well of a job as you could in that state, in that situation. And the fact that she hung around that long oh, yeah. is a true testament. Oh, yeah. I give her all the credit in the world for, like, what you said, you know, coming up a weight class, short notice, and a fighter of Cyborg's caliber. To last into the third round in the uh, official decision time was a minute 56 in. To last that long against Cyborg when we all thought she was just going to get straight up destroyed, I thought, hey, kudos to her. Yeah. And I, I mean, did. she did get put around pretty bad. Oh, yeah. No, she no. She did. Yeah, no. You know, there were times you're like, oh, man. And you thought Cyborg probably could have finished her a couple different times. Maybe. But and you're uh, like, eh. What was, oh, come on. What no, no, no. You saw that same fight. No, no because, because I think. Come on. No, because you got to let me finish. You got to know when I'm speaking, you can't jump in. When I'm oh. saying is this. When Cyborg was kind of picking apart, it could be one of those things caught in the moment because for her to get to the UFC, finally, and to get a chance for a title in the UFC, which she has been you know, asking for for quite some time, to be caught in that moment, maybe you know when it's right there, the foot went off the gas pedal a little bit. You know, I'm not saying distracted. I'm not saying it wasn't fully focused. But I think it was one of those things like when you're in that moment, maybe, you know, yeah, I could finish this, but I want to kind of just, you know, be in the moment of this fight and just this is where I am and this is where I want to be and I want to make that statement. You done? Maybe. Okay. I just didn't want to interrupt you. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. I don't know. I just, it looked like it was pretty bad. It, it looked it looked awful. It was like the occasional like punch drunk kind of swinging, throwing, and you're like, oh, man, it's just... I, I mean, I guess kudos for standing in there and taking that kind of abuse that long, but shoot, that yeah. was, uh, yeah. yikes. Well, definitely earned the paycheck that night. Yeah. Without question. Yes, mm-hmm. indeed. Then we had the men's welterweight title. A.K.A. Dancing with the Stars. A.K.A. Snooze Fest 2017. <laughs> you know, the fight on paper, striker versus grappler, you never know what you're going to get. And... I believe the total strike count from both fighters for 25 minutes was what, Pad? I don't know that offhand. 30? It was at least 30. It was under 50. I know that. I want to <laughs> yeah. say 42, but I don't want to get quoted just yet. Pad's checking that out. Uh, Damian Maya, left eye socket broken, what, first round? Something. I think it was in the first minute. Something like that. But then, he, but then he also had, like, what was it, 25 or more takedown attempts? Mm-hmm. Like, and they were all straight at him? Well, you knew that that's what Damien was going to do. I, I I think if anybody thought he was going to stand up with Woodley, 
no, yeah, know, but you would for you, any length of time. But you would think after like the seventh or eighth time, okay, I've tried this seven or eight times. Let me try it from a different angle. Maybe that'll work. Yeah. Well, I think is at that point his eye socket's broken. He's you know fighting basically with one eye, and he's in a very tough position. So it's kind of just go to you know straight instinct and go okay, you know what can I pull off at this level, and right. what can I do at this you know at this stage, because Woodley wasn't really aggressive. I mean, he played a little more defense, which as a champion you you have the right to do if you want to. Oh yeah, I mean absolutely. It's just it was almost too much. Like I, I, I get it, but man, there's no chances taken. Barely even threw his fist. I agree. Did, did, did nothing. Yeah. Yeah. And when you're in that kind of situation, and you want to put on exciting fights, and you're trying to go around and draw up, you know, a, a mega fight with GSP or a mega fight with Bizbang or uh, whoever else he's trying to call out. I, I think yeah. McGregor at one point he was trying to call out too. If you want to get known for that, you need to take chances. You need to do the devastating knockouts. You need to make statements. You need to make some hype. Unfortunately, I don't think it came across that way, even though he did stop Maya from taking him down, which should be noted as an accomplishment because yeah. you know Damian Maya is arguably the best grappler in MMA. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. To, to stop somebody from taking you down, and I've got the stats in front of me, 20, Maya made 21 attempts at taking him down. That is something that you should be. Hey, good for you. You stop to stop a guy from taking you down twenty one times is an accomplishment. But the total strikes, uh, Woodley had fifty seven, and then if I'm reading this right, Maya had twenty nine. I feel like that number is maybe even be inflated. I think so too. Yeah. <laughs> like when he when he made a defensive move to get him off, they count one as a swing just to get numbers over fifty. But the thing of it is, is this is five five minutes. Oh, yeah, this is 25 minutes. 57 strikes for 25 minutes. Uh, That's jeez. Uh, I, I could do better than that. I don't even want to do math on that. Yeah, it's no, neither two, do I. Two throws a hit minute. Us, hit us up on Twitter if you're good at math with the ratio. Uh, I got you. Ratio. Yeah. It's but, like two and a half throws a minute. But like I said, I mean, Damian, Damian Maya was trying to do his fight, didn't pull it off. Woodley fought very defensively. Was it boring? Yes. <laughs> you could argue. I think I think is if you come in and you want to see knockouts and you source. and you want to see, yeah, you want to see you know knockouts. You want to see exciting submissions. You want to see that. Unfortunately, the fight didn't have it. Even no, yeah. just a fight. See, yeah, because it wasn't even a fight. Here's no. the, here's the thing for me. I'd been up for a while that day just between wor- and, uh, some other commitments and stuff. So I was awake and wired for the cyborg fight because it's cyborg. Okay, and I was awake for the start of the Woodley fight. But as the fight progressed and the fight went on, I started nodding off. And going to sleep because it, there really wasn't much going on. It wasn't, oh, he's got him in a hold. Oh, he's going to tap. Oh, he just took a big shot. It was just, now, oh, hey, they're fighting. Okay, wake me up when it's over. Yeah, and I know Dana White was very critical of uh, Tyrone Woodley's performance. And it, they've been going back and forth, I guess, on social media. Yeah, yeah Wood, uh, Woodley's, Woodley's threatening to leak things. No, he, he backtracked on that. Oh, Last I saw, okay. there was something that came across yeah, the wire. Yeah, he said they had a couple conversations, and they're all buddy-buddy now. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, I, th- I think why, why – I mean, I think Woodley is just more mad that, you know, he didn't get that stellar, you know, super fight after this. One word, paycheck. Yeah, but I think that now – if he doesn't get the fight with GSP, which Dana White has said he's not, he's probably going to get a rematch with Robbie Lawler, which probably. I'm excited to see because Robbie will bring out a fight in him or he's going to get knocked out. One of the two things is going to happen. True. Right. I mean, it's, it'll still be a good fight. but Okay. We got one more fight to discuss, but we're going to take a quick break here on the ODPH. Hit us up on those Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, social media. This is what we do. Hashtag ODPH. John Bones Jones versus Daniel Cormier was the main event of UFC 214. The fight went as we all predicted John was going to win. Yes. However, I did not think he was going to knock out Cormier. I don't know about you guys. No, I kind of thought it was going to go 
you know, the full five rounds, John was going to start to dominate him in the later rounds. Agreed. And, and John would get the decision. I didn't see Jones throwing a leg kick and knocking him out. Sure. I mean, I, I, I didn't see that happening in the third round. I wish it would have happened. I, I am not a DC fan by any means. Mm-hmm. And, you know, even though John's head is whatever's, you can't argue his skill. So, I mean, I just just because, as I've discussed before, my thoughts on DC and the title – are are the same as Jones, you know he's he's holding it. It's not really his. So the beatdown that was coming for him, I I was hoping for it, but I thought was mo- what was most impressive. I didn't think it was coming. Was John after being off as long as he was looked as sharp as ever? I don't know. He took a lot of punches though. He took some punches, but I think because Cormier. Well, you got to think about this though, and I think we addressed this on last week's episode too. This was Cormier's defining moment yep whatever oh, yeah. give take this was the fight he had been the face was in the locker he was working out every day mm-hmm. john jones john jones john jones and he showed up and you knew he was going to bring a oh, different yeah. look to the fight and he did because that second round he did tag johnny a couple times and gave him looks, good looks that yeah. he wasn't he wasn't expecting he got a couple of good shots in i mean going into the round three i thought it was split each each of the fighters one, one, one yeah. yeah one yeah one. I thought John made the right adjustments, and he, DC just got caught with one. Mm-hmm. And there is no fault in getting caught with that. No. And, you know, it was a TKO stoppage, and it was a definitive win for John, which he needed. Oh, yeah. And the only fault I had with the fight was interviewing DC after it. Yeah. Did not like it. And, honestly, if you're posting memes of him crying, I don't want to talk to you. That's just, no. Well, I can provide an, I can provide an update on the uh – Rogan interviewing DC after the fight. Uh, Rogan did take to, I believe it was Twitter, and he apologized for the incident. He said, it's not in my, you know, he, he's like, I don't usually interview fighters right after they got knocked out. He said it was, a, basically he said it was a spur of the moment thing, and he regrets it, and he apologized profusely. Well, I think at that point, too, DC was knocked out, not in the full right frame of mind to be, like, interviewed or in front of anybody. No. And not the best look to do. No, especially if you if there is video out there where it's the overhead camera view uh, from the ceiling or whatever it is of, of that they showed briefly but quickly cut away. But it is out there; you can find it on the internet of DC right after the fight, and he you can just tell you don't have to be a doctor; you can just tell he's out of it. That he tried leaving the the octagon at one point, and they had to physically hold him back in. Yeah, and it's tough to see that because I understand that you know they they always interview fighters win, win or loss. And that's a tough one, too, because, like I said, there was so much emotion behind that fight. Oh, yeah. That without question. And then what happened after the inter- the interviews? There was a final mic grab, and another fighter was called out. Yeah, but wasn't – before you get into that, though, in the Woodley fight, they didn't interview – they didn't interview his opponent. No, I think – They I, sometimes do. They don't always do. But So why, but did, if why they, would you pick they, that they, moment to do it? I think because, honestly – like when you see a guy who's mentally he's lost because he just got kicked to the head. He, he even said he didn't even know what the hell happened. Mm. He said the fight was going good, and then I, don't, I blacked out. I don't even know what happened. And he's in tears because he realized what happened. So and then you're like, oh hey, let's get a quick interview. What do you, what do you think he's going to say in that moment? I think because people were How more feel? emotionally invested awesome. in Jones Cormier than Woodley Maya, and I think also Dana was not happy with the Woodley Maya outcome and was probably like, just wrap this up and let's get going. Yeah, I you know what you I mean. I don't know if he did that or not. I'm guessing. Yeah, it's just my my thoughts on it. That is just like okay, we had a bad fight. Let's just get this over with and get to the main event. As you said, man, it was such a bad look. Like there's, there's oh, yeah. no yeah. no excuse to interview him there. No, None. Like no. you said, he 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 can't. At one point, he couldn't stand on his own power. Yeah, he's so oh, yeah. lost in space. Yeah. Like you see him stand up, and he's like, he I don't tried. Even know what he, the heck he's doing. He so. tried fighting Dana. Yeah, Dana got in there just to just I and I'm guessing I don't know this for a fact. Just making sure he's okay. Yeah, because Dana is at fault if there's something seriously wrong with DC. Dana's just making sure he's all right, and DC starts moving towards him like he's ready to knock his head off. Right, yeah. but again, it's it all it all goes back to you know what you, the guy doesn't know where he is. You've got doctors all around him. He just has enough there to realize that his camp goes, dude, it's done. You lost the fight. Of course, he's a wreck. It's only two losses to. His nemesis Jones. What do you think he's going to say in that moment in an interview? Oh yeah, you know I thought I fought really good. I gave him everything I had. He's a hell of a fighter. Of course he's pissed off. Yeah, yeah. And he doesn't even know where he is. 
What, he, what answer were you going to get out of him? What, it was what just, could you have possibly he, he, done in that interview? He's the bride that got left at the altar. God, you, know, you got to let him go. Yeah. Just, just it, you know what? You, you catch him on Tuesday. Yeah, it was a bad look, and they could have caught him later. You hit the podcast Monday morning. Yeah, yeah, UFC you podcast yeah. Monday morning. Yeah, you catch him. all you need. Yeah. And I, I thought how DC handled it was very well too, because um, yeah. he posted on Instagram yeah. and he made a big, you know, long thing, you know, explaining his side of the story. And like I say, it, anybody posting those crying memes, I don't want to talk to you because that's just nonsense. Because you take a head kick like that, and let's see how you're handling that. I well, mean, that well, was it's right, not right behind the ear. That was yeah. a oh, perfect yeah. shot. Yeah. And you, it's not just you know he did the moment thing. It's he worked for how long to do that, and he dealt, two years. He dealt with saying yet yeah, people saying yeah you're good, but you never beat John. For how many years? And now it's for and, the rest of his and life. And now it's, yeah, you were good, but you never beat John Jones. And now where do you go from here? Because I think we, we addressed this last week. but I think you take time off, and then I think he might move to a different weight class. No, I I, I would say that, but Cain Velasquez is still fighting at heavyweight, and there's mm. no way he would do that, I think, at this age. Um, he's great on commentary when he does the UFC yeah. tonight's. Yeah. Um, I I personally enjoy him. I can see him taking. A, I, don't, I don't know how many fights he's got left on his contract. I can see him going to Dana and going, listen, I don't want to fight for a title. I just want to finish out my contract. And they, he just gives yeah. him a couple. He just gives him a couple fights. But then yeah. But then who who would you give him, stack him against? I mean, I, would you put him against uh, Mister Five there, Vulcan? Mm, maybe. I, don't I know. mean, you could. I mean, Cormier is the number one now. So I mean, in order to get a title fight, you're going to have to go through Cormier. So yeah. yeah. I mean, there's your there's your pre-title fight for 205. Unless, yeah. of course, you take the Twitter and then you get a response at the end of the fight, like, <laughs> like Mr. John Jones decided to address the one and only Brock Lesnar for a, yeah. a Love it. mega fight. Love it. Yeah. Why not? And you no. know what? We've talked about this three, four, five episodes ago now because ODPH, holla. You know what? Just make the mega fight happen. That's not going to happen. It's all about dollar bills at this point. You know it's what I mean? Not going to happen. I agree. Just, with just do it. You know what? Make Jones defend his title once. Fine, because you know he's going to have to. Don't do the Connor thing. Let him just go do whatever the hell he wants. Mm. Hold him to it. He's got to at least defend it once to you know be the two hundred five champion again. Yada yada yada. Then just whatever. Make him fight Brock. Who cares? I agree with both of you because I think that you should let him fight. Honestly, who cares if he wants to fight him? He wants to fight Velasquez. He said three years ago too. Let but, him. But the problem is with Lesnar. If I'm not mistaken, he's still on suspension. Yep. Oh yeah. Till at least February. Yeah. For uh, at least till February. Yeah. Then his other employer, the WWE. I don't know the contract status of that. Doesn't he only fight in like one town anyway? It, it's it's kind of a it's a it's a weird deal. From what oh, we know, okay. it's it's a it's kind of a unique setup because he's like some part time guy, right? Yeah, yeah. He's, he's not on a full like schedule. When they, but when they roll into town, he just shows up. Uh, kind of. He has a he has a dates worked out when he okay. comes and works. I got gotcha. you. And for technically, when that fight would be, uh, in case you don't watch pro wrestling, the equivalent of the Super Bowl is WrestleMania, and where the fight would technically be scheduled. If I'm doing my math right, please correct me on Twitter. I'll be more than happy to address this, is going to be right in the start of the road to WrestleMania mm. in January. So that being said, unless the deal is worked out there and then whatever the status is with the suspension with the, you know. Um, USADA. Thank you. That's going to play the factor. I mean, me personally, I think they should fight. If, if there's a super fight and fans want to see it, why not? Yeah. I'm okay with this because Lesnar is a fighter. John is a fighter. This is not... Connor versus Floyd. This is, you know, the at one point the most dominant heavyweight in the UFC at one point because he was just steamrolling everybody up there until he ran into Cain Velasquez against the guy that is making his legacy as the greatest 205 champion of all time. Yeah. But the, but the other thing you kind of run into is uh what if John throws one well-placed leg kick? Then he knocks him out, and then he can decide. He writes his ticket after that. I mean, honestly, now at this stage for John, I mean, if I'm doing booking, is you need to fight Gustafson for yeah, that oh yeah. rematch. That oh has yeah. been long overdue. Oh, yeah, because you can correct me if I'm wrong. Wasn't that the first fight where John had that he wasn't real dominant and he could have lost that fight? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You make that fight. And if he wins that, then it's, John, what do you want to do? Yeah, because I was having a conversation with a few people, you know, after on Sunday and Monday. 
John doesn't strike me as a Mighty Mouse where he just runs through the division eight times and just keeps defending for the next ten years. John strikes me as this type of person that he wants to prove himself, he wants to test his skills, he wants to put push his abilities, and he truly wants to go down as the best ever. Yeah, which makes sense. And if he wants to try his luck at heavyweight, you know what? He I believe he he walks around at two twenty five somewhere around that. Something vicinity. like that, yeah. I mean, he could arguably, you know, dedicate to putting more muscle on and going up to that weight class and fighting up there. I mean, there are some names up there that he could fight. Miosic is one. Cain Velasquez, I want to see that, especially after the DC fight. Heck yeah. That was that's my money match with John right now. Well, and he's got experience scrum and wrestling people at 265 when he was in co- when he was in high school, he wrestled his brother in practice and his brother Art wrestled at the 265 and up weight class. Yeah. So he's, he's got experience at that. But that's high school, but that's not right. Well, elite, he, no, elite yeah. fighting level, though. No, you got to make not. a note of that. that By the way, true. I did get asked, what is the cutoff for heavyweight? 265. Low. Oh, low? Is it 220? Or is it 210? It's 210. 210 and up is, yep. is heavyweight? Okay. Well, Pad's going to check this up right now. I believe I it's 210. I thought it was somewhere right in that like 215, 220, I, somewhere 210 I believe you can fight at 10 because I know that... Um, I've seen fighters go fight at like two twenty, two twenty five at heavyweight. Right. That that I knew that number there. I just didn't know what the like the lowest uh, cutoff for that number was. Heavyweight. Uh, the heavyweight division in mixed martial arts groups fighters between two oh six to two sixty five. Really? Holy shoot! Two wow. O- so Jones doesn't even have to. No, he just. Oh my god! He could have fought. <laughs> he could have fought on Saturday at that. If he wanted to. He just ate a qu- double quarter pounder and he could qualify. Jeez. Yeah. Which, I mean, but for Brock, who cuts down to 265, if I'm not mistaken, I mean, it is, is as John eloquently put, um, it is a 40-pound difference uh, for where they fight. But it's a fight I think the fans want to see. I, oh, yeah. I'd be interested. But the only other thing, too, is Brock couldn't handle a leg kick from Alistair Overeem to his uh, liver where he has the diverticulitis. If Di- I'm diverticulitis. Thank you. Boom. So if he can't handle a shot there, John throws kicks, as we all saw Saturday. He's got a long leg. Yeah. Can he stop that? Can he maintain, you know, take a shot there? I don't know. That's It's a really questionable area. But if Brock takes him down, you know, can he take him down? And what happens there? I think that, John could handle him because John's fought DC twice, and DC was, you know, an Olympic champion wrestler. It is, it is, but it's also fighting, you know, the different weight style. Right. I, I don't know. Like, it's it, there's a lot of stuff that you can kind of factor in, and I find that fight very intriguing. But I just don't see it happening. No, I'd like to, but I just don't. Yeah, don't get me wrong. I'd love to see it just because it'd be John versus Brock. But like I said, I just, I don't think it's going to happen. I, like Ken, like you said earlier, I'm I'm all about. I'd rather see the Velasquez fight. Yeah. In all seriousness, let him get healthy, and then to hell with Brock. Go fight Velasquez. That's what you want of anyway. Yeah, that's my that's the fight. I would be like, okay, take my money. I'm in. Yeah, take my <laughs> we'll, money we'll, now. We'll we'll look for tickets. We're in because <laughs> Kane is DC's best friend, and you just in you know, I don't want to say embarrassed, but he uh, just he just you know. Did an epic display. You know Velasquez uh, was watching. Oh yeah, I, I'm sure Kane was in the front row somewhere, and they just didn't show him like ready to go in the cage and ready to go fight. And if that didn't fire him up, then DC probably texted him was like, "Oh man, I, re- you know, I hate that John Jones." And Velasquez is like, "You know what? So do I. Yeah, I, I really hate him. Well, I got. I don't y- worry. I'll go get him." That whole camp is so tight <laughs> that I don't doubt that, and I, I guarantee <laughs> you, Kane. Kane is probably well. Kane, I believe they're working on a fight with Miosic right now. Hmm. So. Dare I say... You know it, what? Even if he lost that fight, I'd still take the Jones Oh, fight. yeah, yeah. Without question. Oh, yeah. You make that fight. If John is ready to vacate 205, but I think he needs to fight Gustafson first. And on a side note, I heard something that Rumble Johnson was thinking about coming back to just fight John. I mean, I don't think you make that fight. But other than that, other than him and Gustafson, who else is there? I mean, Vulcan, maybe. Yeah, but he, Down yeah, the but road. he didn't... Yeah, but he... Could, yeah, but Rumble couldn't beat Cormier. Yeah, so, so I, 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 don't, th- I don't think you make that fight. I think the only fight left at 205 for him is Gustafson. And if he beats Gustafson, right off into the sunset. Yeah, just go you, do whatever you want. You've done what you want to do there. Go to heavyweight. If you win there and he's dominating at heavyweight, I don't know if you put him in goat conversation, but you got. You, I think he he's there. He's got the one loss. He's got well, the asterisk what? that. Though. Yeah, asterisk, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. Asterisk one loss, but it is on paper. Yeah, but I think you put him there. I think you got some stuff. Let us know what you think. Hit us up on the social media, hashtag ODPH. We're going to take a quick little break. Be right back. Stand on the Phoenix, baby. Sing it just right. You're going to make lots of money. Just give up the fight. Hey, 
And welcome back to the Ocho Duro Parlay Hour. I am Padawan J, joined by my illustrious co-hosts. Baseball trade deadline uh, just passed us a couple of days ago. We're going to get into some trades. Not all of them. If we got into all of them, we'd be here till next week. Uh, major ones of no, uh, the Yankees traded for Jaime Garcia. Uh, you had Melky Cabrera get shipped from the White Sox to the Kansas City. Ch- uh, wow, I almost said Chiefs. Wow. I know football Somebody's season football. is coming. Yeah, football's coming this week, but you know yeah. what I'm saying. Uh, Francisco Liriano got sent to Houston. And then uh, a couple of the big moves. You had Sonny Gray get traded from the Oakland A's to the Houston, to the uh, wow, uh, the New York Yankees. Are you all right, man? Yeah, yeah a little amped I know, up here. I know a little he's amped got, up. Oh, boy. I know See, he's got football going on. Yeah, in we talked about football when we were off air, and that's just yeah. pads all thrown off now. And so then the uh, – for me, it was a surprise. You had you Darvish get traded from the Texas uh, Rangers to the Los Angeles Dodgers. Well, they had to make a move for Kershaw being hurt, so that makes sense. And Darvish, I mean, kind of surprised that he is leaving Texas, but if you're going to get a substitute for Kershaw, I mean, you can't really get a full substitute because, you know, perennial. Well, apparently it's a good substitute because I saw a thing when I was uh, on ESPN the other day. I uh, scrolling across the bottom that I don't know what the odds were before, but after the Darvish trade, the odds on the Dodgers making the World Series went from like whatever they were to 11 to 4. Yeah. They no, swung heavy. Well, if you think about it, the Dodgers have been uh, straight fire since they came back after the All-Star break. Winners of nine in a row yeah. today. Yeah, I saw something the other day that's like out of their last 46 games, they've won 40 of them. It, it, it's something absurd they've it's won. A, it's absurd. Yeah, which they're clicking at the right time. It's just – and yeah. now that whole division, I know we talked on previous episodes about how close the West was. Uh, no, it's a done deal. Oh, yeah. That is the Dodgers and just the coast now. Pretty much though, them and um, – Washington have ran away with the NL. Yeah, pretty much. The Central is kind of still up for air because it's kind of funny that everybody's counting the Cubbies out for dead, and then suddenly now they're in first. Yeah, I saw a meme the other day. It was of uh, the freeze running in Atlanta, and it was that one video where some kid thought he won and the freeze passed him by, except they put the Milwaukee Brewers logo where the kid's face was, and then they put the Cubs fa- logo where the freeze's face was. Well, Cubbies, I think, were too talented to just kind of you know go by the wayside, even though it is tough to go back-to-back. Yeah. But... I think that in that division, it's still kind of wide open. And, I mean, who knows what's going to happen when they get to October. Just for right now, I think it's the Dodgers to lose in the NL. And then the AL, the right. Yankees made some moves, which I, I think is kind of weird for me to hear the Red Sox upper management say that they are now like the Golden State Warriors of the uh, MLB. Well, the thing here's the thing for me. I don't really know who Sonny Gray is. Is he that good? Yes. He, Okay. He could be – he is good, but is also – whenever they go get somebody from a small market, I always think Jeff Weaver. Oh, Lord. Which is, you know, he's great in a small Carl market. Pavano. Yeah, when you bring him to, you know, the Yankees, which has the tradition, has the fan base, New York media is not exactly too kind. What happens? Either they yeah. sink or they swim. Well, and I, from what I have saw, I know they needed to get a pitcher because there's been rumblings that Jordan Montgomery, the one young kid the Yankees have been plugging into the rotation, is supposedly on an innings limit. Maybe. And, he, and like he's at 106 or whatever innings, and he's got an innings limit of like 160. Well, it makes sense to go get some backups too because uh, Tanaka has not looked good at all. Uh, only at nighttime. I had a buddy on Facebook. Uh, shout out to Kyle Antonitis. He threw up a stat to another uh, Yankees friend of mine. Well, it broke down Tanaka stats. Tanaka in daytime, absolute crap. Tanaka at night, lights out. Oh, you know what? I know that he's stat like too he's like he, um, five. He's like five and five during the day, but then at night he's like eight or nine and oh. I want to say it was maybe last weekend. It's insane. Somewhere like that. It was last weekend, weekend before. He started, and it was a Saturday day game. It was a one o'clock start, and yep. he was oh. Scratch that. He was one in five with an ERA of fifteen. Yeah. yeah, in day games, awesome. Yeah, night night games. He's lights out, which is just it's just weird. It's a, it's a, as you were talking about. Just when you said the Jeff Weaver thing, mm-hmm. make me as a Met fan. I know my buddy back in Ithaca, Jay Mendez. Holla at you. You know that you're gonna hate this. I ragged on you for years, Jason Bay. Yeah, oh, that's another one. Well, we we you, got to live that. We well, live that wonderful dream. You're Jason Bay, Yankees, Carl Pavano. I mean, it's just. I it, think Jason Bay is probably the worst. Mm, almost ever. Oh, don't even. Don't you? You didn't live that catastrophe. It's, it's arguably. It, I've, I've talked to many a Mets oh fan. Oh my god, and, it's and that's, terrible. Yeah, that's a tough one. But that's also another thing too is when you get players that are dominant in small markets, and you bring them to a bigger market, 
and more, you know, rabid fan base, which I don't want to take anything away from other fan bases, but there's a difference when, you know, you're, you're playing postseason, you know, in a small market to like you're playing in Boston or you're playing in yeah. the Yankee, you know, Yankee Stadium or, or even mm-hmm. City Field. It's just it's a different type of fan base. Well, like you said, the media plays a big part of it yeah. too. I mean, you, can, oh, you yeah. can, your reputation can go to hell in a handbasket real quick mm-hmm. in New York versus Oakland. I'll say yeah. if, if you're in Kansas City, they're not too focused on what you're having for dinner. New York or Boston, they're going to know what you're having for dinner and what you had for a dessert. Harvey. Yeah, exactly. I where, mean, where are you golfing the day before your first start? I, I think that's a great example because <laughs> that's a perfect example. Yeah. I know. Yeah, it's just I live this. yeah, it's when you know when you're on the back page of the post or you know yeah. in daily news, and it's just always something going on. But and like you said, yeah. think about it. When was the, when was the last time you heard like, hey, Oakland starter, whoever, intern Padawan, uh, out partying the night before? Yeah, you don't nothing. Yeah, in New York though, you know who he was with, how much money he spent, what he ate for dinner. Java if Chamberlain. He t- if he tipped how many or not. times? Perfect he- example. Oh, of that. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Oh, Legend yeah. of Java. Ugh. Java. Ugh. Yeah, but that Ugh. was but that was another thing. He was all over the post, and I mean, every time at least I picked up a, a paper, he was all you know. They always knew where he was and who he's yep. partying with and all that. And, and it's just, I think, as, as an athlete, it's tough for you to you know be really fully focused when you have that much media scrutiny on you. Some people rise to it. Some people, you know, unfortunately don't. Yeah, and of course the trades aren't done and over with. The official trade deadline was on Monday, but there is until I believe it's the end of the month, the waiver deadline. Yeah, yeah that's always it, It's weird. always weird. Typically what will happen is a team will put, any, you know, the lower teams that aren't really in it, they'll put all their players up just to smoke screen who's up, up for waivers. And mm-hmm. then, you know, they'll really start putting their people. I know the first name, major name has come out, uh, Justin Verlander. Has been put on revocable waivers. You know, I was really bummed about that too. Coming from, like as as a Met, you know, knowing that you know our rotation is extremely inconsistent. I mean, all over the place. Syndergaard, he's mm-hmm. throwing a baseball, but it doesn't matter now. Harvey, pff, you know, Matt's he's having a terrible stretch right now. He's having a bad month, month and a half. Yeah. yeah. You know, I'm thinking, why not go get him? Why not get that veteran guy, Verlander, do something to get some stability in that rotation? Well, you know they got I mean? to. can get five, six innings out of him. That's it's they, more than they, we still get lately. A, they still got a shot to get him. It's just he's got to make it all the way through waivers and have and have no team claim him. Right. And even if a team say the Kansas City Royals claim him, the Tigers can pull him back and say no, nope, we're not doing it. But if he then makes it all the way through waivers, he, they can then negotiate with any team in baseball and say, all right, what do you want to trade? Going going back though to the Darvish trade, it is absolutely filthy when you think about it. Like first of all, I mean, I talked to a guy at work, Shay, mm-hmm. uh, good guy, huge huge Dodgers oh yeah I mean he goes for like I think a month at a time out to spring training and follows him everywhere and gets all the little download deets and stuff yeah they've got three lefties in their starting rotation Uh uh-huh their their rotation goes left left right left yeah their first four so they had so now you go Kershaw your ace goat left-handed number one you go to Darvish Darvish I mean Damn, I you're right. Well, and then you go to, I think the number two is a uh, kid. I think his name's uh, it's Rue. They, I think I remember. Pat's checking that up as we talk. No, no, no. I know it's. I know his last name's Rue. I don't know if he's their number two or if they go to Alex Wood. I think Alex Wood is their um, two behind I think Kershaw you, at the I moment. Think you are right. As of right now, yes, but yeah. that's not so, including. But, but now they'll go to three. You know, Dar- Darvish will be there too. I'm sure they'll go left, right, left. But uh, no, I mean Hyun Yin Rue. Yeah, so he's their number two, and then they use Wood as their three, but. So he'll go to four. But, like, I'm excited for that trade. Like you said, obviously the Dodgers are on a tear as it is. Darvish, he's had a bad stretch, but it's Texas yeah. Rangers. And, okay, whatever. But I'm excited to see him because he's going to get a really good opportunity Friday, this Friday, actually. Darvish gets his first start in City Field against Jacob deGrom. Ooh. That's That'd a really good, good game. I mean, That'd be a really if anybody, good you know, obviously um, as a Mets fan, I'm stoked for – we're I'm in, stoked and to see you it. You know, but. Darvish is going to be excited because he's going from a team in the Texas Rangers where the only exciting thing they had going for them is Adrian Beltre got his 3,000th hit. And which, you just catapulted to which, the number one team in baseball. Don't get me wrong. Congratulations to, to Beltre for getting 3,000 hits. It's a major accomplishment. But he went from the Rangers where the biggest story for them is Beltre to the Dodgers where first place, everything's clicking. They're on a winning streak. You got Cody Bellinger and everything else where he's going to be real excited. Fastest to 75 in their team's history yeah this year yeah. without him and now they've got him oh my god no Heads but, up. And, and they're gonna make a deep run i think oh yeah i mean i think i made the prediction on the show a couple a couple weeks ago I, I said i think they're gonna win it i mean granted the yankees made some moves houston did not 
I thought that was very interesting. They, they tried like hell. Trust me. I was following Mets. They called every day for DeGrom, like, and sometimes twice. Yeah. Because <laughs> they were trying so hard to go for DeGrom, and they were just. I just couldn't believe they couldn't pull a move off, though. That, well, that, so what was it? Somebody pitcher from Houston was calling them out about that. They're like, you got all these other teams making deals, and you do nothing? So where do you go? Who would you? I, I mean, I think I think it's foolish that people are passing on Verlander, or at least didn't make a serious offer. I thought he could help you out, Houston. I think I, he could start helping out anywhere. I yeah. think Pete, and this is I don't know anything. I didn't see anything. I think teams probably made in, inquiries about him, but the asking price was too high. Maybe. Plus, he's got. I think he's got a full no trade clause in his contract. So yeah. Well, I guess it depends on on him and you know what he wanted to do, and and when you have those no trade clauses, hey, they work. In your favor, so you can't really argue too much. What do you think? How did your team do in this offseason, or not this offseason, but this trade season? Are they going to be making a deep run in the postseason, or are they going to be playing golf? Let us know. One quick thing as a Met fan, I was really heartbroken to see Addison Reed go because I thought he was an awesome closer for us. He's really helped us out since 2015 when we got him, I believe that number was. Um, I'm pretty sure it's when he came there. 15? Yeah, 15. Man, when we let him go, I mean, we got three prospects. They're all 22. Mm-hmm. Um, the one closer there, I looked him up uh, last. I looked him up the other day. He was really good. He's five and one, ERA under two. But again, it's low A ball. Yeah, and, take and, it for what it's worth. But. Yeah, and Verlander does indeed. I looked it up. Does indeed have a full no trade clause. Oh boy! So that helps in your favor. Let us know how your team did. We want to hear hashtag ODPH. We'll be right back. I know life ain't always fair Some things just happen the way They're not supposed to Don't always expect the worst Just always be prepared I don't Just move on In my own way And I will fly above the sea And over the sky Cause I am strong And this Saturday kicks off the unofficial start of the NFL season with the Hall of Fame game. Inductions are going down Saturday night. Very stacked class. Morton Anderson, kicker, running back Terrell Davis, safety Kenny Easley, owner, president, and general manager of the Dallas Cowboys, Jerry Jones, defensive end, Jason Taylor, quarterback, Kurt Warner, and the man, the myth, the legend, LaDainian Tomlinson. That is a very good class. That's going to be a fun class to watch. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I can imagine some of the induction speeches is going to be very, very epic with that one. We'll say, you know Jerry's going to take a few shots. Oh, yeah, Jerry's going to come out blazing, He's gonna be- firing shots. Who's he going to have introduce him? Jimmy uh, Jimmy Johnson? Uh, no, he will probably. I would say Troy Aikman. Okay. Probably just introduce himself. No, maybe. I could see him doing that. But he's I could see him introduce himself. Just because he would. He, yeah, I could see him doing he, that. He, he will have the most. Tw- 2017 Hall of Fame inductee. Me. Yeah. <laughs> he, will, he will have the most entertaining speech of everybody. Owner, goat. <laughs> yeah. yeah. GM, head coach. Yeah, he'd be like, excuse me, let me show you my rings here. Is there any uh, Philly fans in the house? I know there's oh, a, I, I know there's a little dust on him. It's been like 20 years, but whatever. Yeah, no, he'll, they still count. He will probably <laughs> he'll do something that'll be kind of, you know, very great for sound bites, so which yeah. will be entertaining to watch. Yeah. Um and this one I I got to say I I've watched a lot of these guys, you know, when I was growing up play. Ladanian was pretty much a staple on my fantasy football teams, which we have to remind everybody that as the season goes on, we're going to be giving you some fantasy football advice. Hopefully it leads you to the championship and you don't get bounced in the first round of the playoffs. But we're not uh, afraid to share our teams. Yeah, we're going to give you kind we'll of our, our teams as we get a little closer. As we start going into the training camps, you know, preseason games, we're going to kind of give you our picks. So make sure you stay tuned for that. I have to say this is probably the best time of the year because it's like, you know what, you can just it's like you can smell football. It's coming. You just know it's there, baby. Yeah. You've got your fantasies coming out. You've got all your magazines. You've got all the inside dirt. Camps are going on. Sterling Shepard uh, today, severe leg injury for the Giants. Yeah. They haven't I mean, fully announced what's going on there. But um, still, I mean, it's you just know like it's coming. Yeah. Like, you know it's coming, baby. And I'm oh, so yeah. pumped for it. It's like you just 
can't help but get crazy for it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's always a it's I don't want to say a stressful time, but it's always a great time, you know. Oh, yeah. As a as a fan, no, but training camp you always get worried when your players are you know oh, yeah. involved because if somebody gets hurt and like I said, so we don't especially if you draft a little early. Yeah, and oh. we and we don't know the status of Sterling Shepard yeah. though going on because I want to say it may have been last year. I was I think it was last year it was Pittsburgh. Yeah, it was Pittsburgh, Minnesota, mm-hmm. and they played the Hall of Fame game, which brought up a whole scrutiny uh, two years ago. Scratch that. Because in that game, Pittsburgh's kicker broke his leg. Ooh. I do remember that. Yep. And then it went all downhill because they got Josh Scobie oh, from yeah. the Jags, and then the, like their yep. kicking season went all they lost. They lost several games that way yep. because of yep. kicks, and they were like bouncing kickers religiously. So there was a lot of talk about it. Meh. I know th- th- there's a lot of talk about shortening the preseason games. I wouldn't mind seeing them shortened for preseason. I understand why they have them as long as they sure. do. But I mean, it's kind of like a double edged sword because I think you have to get back in you know football shape. But you got to think you're a pro athlete; you're pretty much in shape year round. Yeah. yeah. If you're you know at an elite level, but you know I guess it, it makes some sense if you if you're fighting for roster spots. I mean, if if you're you know an established superstar, I guess you really don't have to worry too much. But yeah. you know, depending on what side of the fence you're on about that. But it's always a great weekend to see you know football is back and you hear the legends talk and. I, like I said, this class is going to be very entertaining to listen to. Kurt Warner, I'm sure, is going to have a good speech. Ladanian's oh, yeah. going to have one. Mm. Uh, Jason Taylor, he'll have something. You know, even as a as a diehard Buffalo Bill fan as I am, you know, I have to give respect to Jason Taylor, even though he tormented us in uh, Upstate once or twice, many many games. But you know, you got to give him his due. He he showed up and he balled out. And you know, and that's where you get, you're going to see. You know, these guys have really kind of this is legends going in. Mm-hmm. You know, I definitely oh, yeah. I definitely have to say they've all made their mark. They've all, for the most part, I believe, won a Super Bowl ring, uh, with Ooh, the exception of Ladanian and um, Taylor. And Taylor, I'm not sure if Morton has. I don't know. I'll have to check that up. But I know with Kurt Warner, you know, who had w- the the greatest show on turf, one of the legendary yeah. teams in, in the NFL, almost pulled it off with the Cardinals. I know we're gonna have one Twitter fan shooting uh, a couple lines in. I think about he already this. is. Yeah, he probably is. <laughs> uh, so we, he's already he's got his phone out so fast. He's five tweets. Yeah, as soon as, as, soon as he hears page. this, yeah, he will be uh, discussing that and how San Antonio Holmes was out of bounds. Um, uh, Morton Anderson, not a uh, Super Bowl winner. Really? I thought he was no seven time Pro Bowl. No, uh, don't, no. Uh, Super Bowls, but like, but what my point was about this is, you get these guys that have really made a staple in the game, and when you hear their names, you know who they are, you know what they brought to your team, even if like in the age of fantasy football now too, where you know players that you probably, if there wasn't fantasy football, would you know the amount of details you do about other players? True, you know that's where it kind of comes into play. So this class is definitely going to be one to watch. I'm sure it's going to be a fun show in Akron on Saturday night. Uh, Arizona and Dallas, I believe, are playing. Yep. So we're hoping for a very competitive game, no major injuries for anybody. And, you know, I guess excited because I believe second week of September we kick off. Oh, yeah. Oh, baby. Monday night. So stoked. So oh, yeah. stoked. Vikings playing? Yes. The return of Adrian Peterson home. We'll get into that at a later date because, man, I'm already fired up about it. You know, Bill's open with the Jets, I believe. <laughs> that'll be that'll be one to watch. Divi- yeah. Division games are always fun, no matter no matter how your team is doing. Boy, nothing will get you fired up on a Sunday like Tyrod Taylor versus... Uh, exactly. Uh, yeah. You're welcome. Boy, well, that's a Sunday burner. But there's going to be a lot of questions answered because going to new team, new coach, you know, pretty much when a new coach comes in, it's a new team. That's what I'm trying to say. It's going to be kind of interesting to watch. So Yeah, I expect Eric Decker. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. Oops. You know, the Jets are going to be kind of <laughs> one to watch, too. I mean, I mean, he's going to have 150 yards, but it's not with the Jets. Yeah. Well, it's going to be you know, 150 yeah. yards if he's lucky. We're going to get into that because I know we have a football special coming down the pike. Yes. As we get closer to the season starts. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Hit us up on the Facebook. Hit us up on the Twitter. Hit us up on the Instagram. We want to hear from you. This is the ODPH.
Closing out the show with that local minute, and we first got to give a shout out to the common man, Vince Ciotoli. Yes. Rest of Crow's Nest MMA. Uh, last week's episode, most downloaded in ODPH history. Yeah. In Binghamton? Maybe in Binghamton. We're still trying to get confirmation of that. Oh, no. We disclosed our location. Well, we are from the 607, so you can kind of throw a dart so there. And Google, we'll Google search will narrow that down. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But a very sincere thank you from everybody that's part of the ODPH team. Uh, we can't thank you enough for downloading, listening, spreading the word. Uh, we can't wait to have Vince back on. Vince wants to come back on ASAP, uh, but we want to kind of make it a little worthwhile, so we'll probably have him on after his fight and before August his next 12th. one. August 12th. August 12th. Seneca Niagara Casino, I believe. You yep. got it. King of the Cage. Uh, make sure to hit it up on social media. Put the common man on your hashtags. Uh, not really sure how soon the t-shirts are coming out, but uh, our buddy uh, Frederick Theodore, what up? Mr. It, Thirsty Threads. Yes, Mr. Thirsty Threads Inc. himself is uh, kind of working on a deal for that. So uh, we might have some information on our website. I know uh, Frederick is kind of working on that as we speak, but we just want to say thank you for listening. Thank you for you know showing the attention to this show. We put a lot of hard work into it, and we're glad you appreciate that. Going into the local minute, though, from one local star to another, the Rumble Ponies have been kind of tearing it up since they came back from break. Yeah, they are currently in second place, uh, 11 games behind the Trenton Thunder, but for their last 10, they have won eight and only lost two. Yeah, they've been on there fire. They've been on fire. Yeah. If you haven't been down to the stadium, you need to get down there. Trenton's in town this week, and then they're taking off for the weekend, but, yep. I mean, Trenton is in first place. It's kind of like maybe an early playoff prediction. But the Ponies been hanging in there. They've they've played uh, amazing this past weekend. Yeah. And you, if you haven't been down the game, get down there. Hashtag bring it home. Hashtag let's rumble. By the way, speaking of the Ponies, shout out to the pad. If you recall a couple, if you recall, somebody gave us our Eastern League All Stars. Oh, somebody, yeah. uh, somebody on that team, Mr. Chris Flexen, is actually in the MLB. He's got a second start tonight for the Mets. Oh, All right, good for him. Look at Pad. Give me the inside deets. He's digging in the folders, Damn. folks. He's getting you that dirt that you need to yeah. know these players. Pad player, dare we say? Hashtag it. Ooh, hash, ooh start trending. All right. I'm hash, in. There we go. Hashtag there we go. pads I'm players. So, yeah, he's good, You know, doing his second start in Colorado tonight. Yep. He had a very rough go the first time. Three full innings. A little dicey. Uh, first first for, battery saw. He first, got greeted very nicely jetters. to the MLB. It was a home run. But it's okay. That happens. Yeah. Yeah. You know, no pitcher ever goes without a home run given up. No pitcher ever oh, goes, yeah. you know, no. winless. So, but it was good to see Rumble Pony. I mean, he actually came off Tommy John surgery. He did a little more information. He did Tommy John. He came through it. He was tearing it up in single A. Brought him up to Binghamton. Obviously, made the All Star team. Yep. Bring him up. And that's the beauty of going starts. to minor league games because you see the stars of tomorrow today. Yep. Or you could see the stars of today right now. Uh, Juan Lagares of the New York Mets is currently rehabbing with your Binghamton Rumble Ponies. Yes. Folks, you got to get to the game. Support the squad. Hashtag bing at home. Hashtag let's rumble. That's right. That's right. And speaking of uh, the good old 607 Binghamton area. I'd say we had some good news too. We have some hockey news to discuss. Oh, the logo for the Binghamton Devils was unveiled this past Saturday at the Broome County Veterans Memorial Arena. Or is it? No, it's a Floyd L. Floyd L. Mains, yeah. I lose track, folks. It's like when people talk about progressive field for the Indians, I still call it the Jake. Uh, that's all right. I think everybody does. Yes. But the new logo was unveiled. I honestly didn't think it was that bad. No, I liked it. I mean, is definitely, as a minor league team, you're going to see kind of cartoonish figures. Yeah. You're not going to see any really kind of dramatic, I guess, I'm just thankful it wasn't like the letter B. Yeah, with the, a horn with on the it. B with a horn and the, and the double <laughs> yeah. tag. That's on what it. I thought it was going to be. I yeah. thought you, see, was... you see a little tail kind of like curl around the B or something. Like, oh, That's what dude. I was trying to go with. Like, you're not going to see like you know anything you know really crazy. But I thought it was good. I honestly did. Yeah. I I love right, yeah. I love the shoulder patch. Yeah, I think that that is a, a very cool logo. I wish, yeah, I wish they had one like that was just all black. Like, just a really sharp-looking, mm. all-black. They might do that for kinda, a jersey. I think that'd be really slick. They might do that with a jersey that coming out. That might but, be the home jersey. But, I mean, no, well, no, hey, no, you know, no uh, disrespect to the Ottawa Senators, but you know what? Hey, these guys are good. Yeah. Yeah. 
So, I mean, if anything else, we're going to get some really good hockey here coming up soon. Not that yeah. Ottawa didn't provide it. Ken Danikoka was in town, too. I think, didn't didn't Albany, uh, they either won or were in second place, right? Yeah, they've been yeah. contending, too. I mean, they're really good. Yeah. So, yeah. More, more good stuff to come in the 607. Absolutely. And definitely the season starts. It's like October 11th. I believe so. Yeah, yeah. somewhere in there, yep. Pat's going to check that in a sec. You know we'll be there. Well, I won't be there for opening night. Neither well, will Pat. Night, because but we'll uh, be there. Yes, but we will be there, actually. JR will be there, maybe with, maybe with the squad. Uh, I heard uh, you know a couple of our faithful listeners are already looking to get some season tickets, so you can't go wrong with that. Hashtag Bing Devils. Uh, a couple of my peers do, as a matter of fact. They, they've already got their season tickets locked up. And, and you know what? The turnout was really great at the arena. Like yeah. I, I had a chance to watch on Facebook because, unfortunately, I couldn't make it down. But – I was watching the live ceremony. It was definitely a great show to go, you know, see the support of the town come out. Especially, we've always been a hockey town here. Mm -hmm. But to really kind of see that, you know, as we're transitioning to another team, you know, even as the Devils, it's still nice to see the fans are still supporting the area and supporting the team. And, you know, and no and no disrespect, too, but I think it's got to be really nice, too, for the players because you think, you know, you read all the reports when Albany was saying that they were going to lose the team. They're you know they're they're playing in a stadium that holds seventeen thousand people and they can't get four to fill it. Yeah. You know they can't even get four thousand people to go to a game. So I mean, if you're a player and you look statistically and you're like, man, you know what, the Ottawa Senators they may not have been that great. People showed up. Yeah. Like they they had a full you know not a packed house, but I mean it was full. Binghamton has always supported the team. Oh, no yeah. yeah. Who's been so here. I mean that's if you're a player you're like, oh man, I'm gonna play in front of a, you know. Granted, it may only be I think it's like five thousand people. I think. That five, Floyd five, holds. five K is a sellout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right, yeah. a little over. Yeah, but I mean that place gets rocking on a on a Saturday night when the when you've got a really good rivalry coming into town. So I mean I, that's going to be a really good environment, especially if you're a player. I will tell you this: the loudest I've ever heard that arena was when they were in the Calder Cup Finals. Oh yeah. And if you want to talk about a town that got up for the playoffs, that buzz that went through everywhere. I don't care where you went in town. Yeah. Everybody. Even the the non hockey fans were talking hockey, yeah, and got behind it. And I remember the night that they had they took a the three, oh, uh, was it three one lead, something like that. I yeah. believe so. When they won their last home game up here, the town was partying. There, everybody was out, you know, making noise. The buzz in the in the city that night was electric, and oh, I yeah. wish like. Because I know you you wouldn't live here at that time, right? If you did, you would have been like, oh yeah. my, like you would have had hockey fever more than you did last year when you jumped on the blue ship or blue shirt bandwagon. See, I'm just getting so fired up talking hockey. I no, can't yeah, I, I, he's, already, he's already losing it. I wasn't yeah. able to make it to any of the playoff games just because of work and everything else, but I was able to get down for the uh, celebration parade down in Binghamton outside the arena. Mm -hmm. That was easily the most insane thing I'd ever been to. Now, to be fair. Mm -hmm. I mean, I may not have been around in the in that part of the 607. However, I did not lack good hockey coming from Cornell University. Oh yeah, well, yeah. I mean, those games, Cornell RPI. Oh my God, they were in the Frozen Four. I think like back to back to back to back to back years. Yeah, and they're when you, so good. Yeah, college hockey is granted, great to watch if you get the opportunity to. Granted, it's not you know it's no. not an affiliate of a major team, but damn, like some no. of them boys are still playing now. And we've been lucky here that we've had They're great awesome. great organizations come through town, you know, whether Absolutely. it was yeah. the Whalers back in the day to the Rangers to the uh, Senators and now the Devils. You know, we're excited. There's a lot of buzz behind the team. And like mm -hmm. I said, the, the press conference this Saturday was really, really great. We're already set for hockey. I am. Yeah, like, football I mean, hasn't started, but we know hockey's coming down the pike. You've got football ready to go. Baseball's you know, yeah. getting ready to October. And, Man. and if anybody knows me really well, we're going to be talking a lot of hockey on here. A Are lot. We, hockey? Blue Rangers? Oh, uh, yeah. Lundquist the, for days? Lund Lundquist, had, Lundquist has yeah, new pads yeah, yeah. come out. <laughs> I'm already like, that was already enough to fire me up. I'm like, because I'm trying to get tickets for the home opener when they get announced for the Madison Square Garden. Right. Which, yeah. No, I'm sorry, hockey season. Just, I know I know it's I know it's a little off the beaten topic. Going down with some friends. We're gonna go check out um I'm actually going to a Steelers game this year. Oh cool. Steel there you go. Didn't know if you guys knew that. Steelers Ravens Sunday night game. Oh Lord. Yeah. Oh, that'll be so, a fun one. Hire I mean, some security. I have I have no particular pull in this game because I'm a Vikings fan, so they oh, they're go. not even in the right conference, but um hello. Sunday oh, night rivalry go. game. Are you kidding me? Hell yeah, man. Oh yeah. Whenever you have the chance to go to a live sporting event, you should go. Just for the experience. The only the only thing that stinks is the people that we're going with. This is where it gets the hockey. That game's in Pittsburgh, which means the team that's playing there is 
Sydney and the boys. Your boys. So they want to go. They want to go because their season opener, I believe, is either. It's not that weekend, but it's close. Yeah. But if you have the chance to go, you should go. Oh, it is. It'll be. It'll be. Ah, the game. I, I'm. Oh, it's a uh, Penguins and Avalanche. Oh, okay. That'll be a fun one to go. So see. whatever. I mean, it's not a rivalry game, but still. I mean, I'm. Yeah. I, I don't really care about to the s- Penguins. To but see hockey whatever. live is amazing. But just so, to see the speed of a professional yeah. game. Oh, absolutely. Nothing like, against the Devils and against the Senators, but. No, I mean, AHL, AHL and NHL is 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 very close. Yeah. But it's just the, the experience you go to the sporting events and seeing the crowds. If you have a really passionate crowd in attendance. So it's going to be epic. It's going to be something you'll be telling people about for months, years, what have you. What you and I should do is go get our t- go get our tickets for preseason Buffalo Vikings. Week oh, one. It's in, it's in a week. It's in a week and a half. Uh, unfortunately, I can't. <sighs> I know. I'll go. I know. I know you're going to send a go, JR Go see Sammy B for uh, one drive. Yep. <laughs> Just pray the, pray the entire time. <laughs> yes, JR is our roaming reporter. I mean, he covers the Floyd Connor press conferences. He'll be up LA, the... Alaska, New Zealand, you name it, man. Yep, he's Mr. Area Codes. <laughs> but, folks, that's how we do it here on the ODPH. We want to thank you for listening. We want to thank you for the support. Hit us up on the website, com. Hit us up on the social media this week. We want to know what you're thinking. And we, we, like I say, I can't say it enough. We thank you for the support of the show. Last week's episode was insane, and we can't wait to do it again with you here on the ODPH. So for the Padawan J, Sal Mangalor, JR, I'm Ken M. We'll see you next time.